Hey everyone, today we will be making fake faux peeps. I didn't get a chance to make these with air dry clay, which is what I would normally do. So I found a 3D print file on Thingiverse and I will link that file down below in case you have a 3D printer and you want to print them. If not, you can use other things like foam, air dry clay, and I've even seen other crafters do them with foam core. And there's a lot of other things that you can try to use and, um, and it'll work out just fine. What I did here is I painted them yellow, pink, and this pool blue. And I put them on, hot glued them on skewers, and then I also glittered them with yellow, blue, and pink glitter. And I found these straws at Dollar Tree a while back around Valentine's Day. And I'm using them because I didn't want to paint the skewers. I was just trying to get finished with Easter because Easter just sneaked up on me this year. And... So I was trying to do what I could without waiting that extra time for painting and drying. And when I put these on here, it did pull back a little bit because the straws pulled back a little bit because the Mod Podge, I sealed everything with Mod Podge and then it kind of binded up at the end there and just made, and you can see I can't, get this on all the way because it just dripped down and it dried right there. So I'm taking these nippers here and pliers and I'm trying to see if I can get that off and it's not working. So I have some sandpaper and I figured I'm going to give this sandpaper a try and see if I can just get the straw up to the end. And that, that little bit of space was just bothering me. So I wanted to pull it up to the end so that you didn't see any of this skewer stick. And it probably wouldn't be that much of an issue, but it just bothered me. So I found a way to get around it. And I'm going to try this again. Okay, and that worked. So now on this one where it had a little bit of bundling up at the bottom, I'm going to just take that one and I'll do that. And there was just a tiny little gap in there. So if that happens to you when you're gluing anything on and, you know, and I had hot glue there too. So that was something because I didn't really make a hole to put the skewer sticks in the 3D print. I just pushed them in and glued them. I'm happy with the way that that turned out. I really did wish I had maybe another pink or yellow straw but I just didn't and probably what I'll even do is swap these out too if you know when I'm done with this craft I'll swap out the straws but they I really love them they I used them for a few crafts already and I held that upside down but I have acrylogy from Dollar Tree and it's just brown and their little eyes stand up in their nose so just taking my daughter and it's doesn't come out really really clear at first because of course it's bumpy from the glitter so I just did the best I could and got them on there the best and I thought brown would be good because it'd be more of a mellow color instead of black and then here I have this birdhouse that I got from Michaels it's painted in a in a light turquoise and the what I'm going to do is put flowers on it with dots and that's just some green paint that I got a while back from, I believe that was from Michael's or Walmart. <laughs> All right. And then I'm taking my sponge brush and just going through and there's a gap under there and I just want to cover that up with the green. and. This sponge brush that I have is from Dollar Tree. I had bought a package of them and I wash them out when I'm finished with them and they last pretty long, but then sometimes they get to a certain point where they're just done and you can't use them anymore. So right here, putting the tip of the brush in too so I can get some color and get some paint on there. 
and I'm going to put flowers up there. And then what I'm going to do is take my brush and flatten it a little bit more because when I was getting color on, I was using more of the tip. And now what I'm doing is flattening my brush out and, and then still, you know, and going down here, you'll see I'm using more of the tip of the sponge. And then as I go along, I'll flatten that brush out a little bit. I'll just hold it flatter. And I'm holding it from the top, but I did have a little bit of, I got some on my hands. So I was just trying to concentrate on not putting my hands back in it. So <laughs> I'm trying to hold it from the top. And I just had, it was just something I just had to pay attention to and, and concentrate on. You know, once I got that on my hands and I got it back on the birdhouse, but you know, and then as I go towards the bottom here, it's the same thing. I'm depositing the paint with the tip of the brush. And then as I go along, I'll lay that brush a little bit flatter and it'll look a lot like just the like foliage or brush behind the, or on the bottom of the birdhouse. And that looks good. I like the way that that came out. And here's our colors. This is a lavender. And I believe that this is an April Barrel paint um, that I have. And this is a dark violet. And that's, that's a Walmart brand. That's Dollar Tree white, Dollar Tree yellow and craft smart from michaels pool blue craft smart from michaels which is metallic pink michaels and that is red and this is dollar tree and it's orange and this is also craft smart and it is in a light green and that's just some white there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a tiny little bit and put it in each little tray here and you don't even need i, I put way too much you don't even need that much, but that was just a matter of some of them I just don't have opened yet. So I was spilling it out instead of squeezing it out. So you do tend to get a little bit more paint. Sometimes the paint, I don't take that plastic thing off on the outside because it just drives me crazy. And so I end up pouring my paint in. It's just like a little shortcut. So I have, I'm going to put this orange here and it doesn't want to come out. So I have to shake it up a little bit. And sometimes the Dollar Tree paint too, if you just shake it up, it'll be nice and thin. Okay, and I can't get that violet paint out of there, so I'm just gonna use the cap. And I've got my daughter, and what I'm gonna do is, I'll start with white, and I'm just gonna make tiny little dots. I'm gonna dip my brush in, and just dot, dot, dot. And I try, to do a little bit of a pattern on the one side with the white and then on the other side with the white, just so I could get some uniformity in the front of it. And then later on, we'll just alternate. And then here's that violet. We'll see what we can do with that. And you know, that was very thick and I didn't, I didn't want to put water in it because sometimes when I put water in the paint, then it's too runny. So I just figured I'd work out of the cap on this one. And another color that would be really pretty on here that's really in right now is like a blueberry color. And this kind of reminds me of that. But I'm going to try to also alternate onto the other side a different color here. Okay, and it's a light lavender there. And we'll just go through and alternate our colors out. No, you know, once it got past the very, very front, I just picked and, you know, picked any color that I wanted. And there's such a variety. And what I'm doing too, if you'll notice, instead of dipping, dipping my daughter in and then wiping it off and dipping it in and wiping it off, I go in an area and of one color and I'll make a little pattern there of that color. Then I wipe off my brush. I have a paper towel next to me and some water. And what I'll do is I'll wipe off my daughter and then go back through, get another color 
and then work my way through that way. And that seems to help without, you know, with not the, with the washing, I mean, not the washing, but the rinsing of the daughter and then wiping off. And here I'm taking some yellow because I want to make a little group of, a little grouping of flowers here that stand up just a little bit taller than the others and just give it a little bit of dimension here and some interest. And really I'm just taking dots and making it into a triangle. And then we'll do that over on the other side. And you can make this any color that you want. I just chose yellow and um, that is entirely up to you. Pink, blue, any color that you decide what I think will look really nice. And I'm going to put some purple dots over here to make another taller little plant in, in that triangle shape. And really it's just a matter of dipping in and making that triangle shape and just bringing it all the way up to the top. And then as you go along and you see another spot that you want to fill in, you can fill it in with another dot or you can just do a, the smallest amount of dots that you want and it will still look pretty. It'll look, it'll look nice with less dots, more. Either way that you want to do it, it'll, that triangle shape just stands out and it looks so pretty. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two more of those purple plants on this side. And I think that looks really nice. That just gives a little bit of a different look to it. Something to focus your eye on. Okay, and then that's our stand up plants there. And I'm trying to, as I'm talking through this, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to think of the name of the plants and I can't think of them right now. I believe that what I'm painting over here is considered lavender, <laughs> but I can't remember the name of the yellow. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you, if you remember the name of the yellow, post that down below for us. I just can't remember it right now. I'm taking a lighter lavender here and putting them in the dots. Now I did it when it was wet. I probably could have waited till it was dry, but I don't know if it would have blended as well. So then I'm taking that white on top of the lighter lavender and just to try to give it a little bit of, of dimension. And I like the way that that turned out. And then I'll go back over here. And since I already have my lavender close, I'm just going to do it, you know, do my lavender that way. And then you see, I go, I went, I finished up, you know, and put my dots all the way through and all the way on top. And then I'm going back through. Now this paint did dry for the most part. Uh, it's acrylic, so it, it dried. And I'm taking the tinier, the smaller part of my daughter and just taking some lighter colors and on some of the flowers, not all of them, I'm, you know, um, putting in a lighter color. And then here I saw a space here. So I thought, well, I'll go through and make a little bit of flowers. They look like they were floating on nothing and just floating in the air. So I thought I would put more color in there. And then, you know, you can always take a look back on it and just see what you think. But I put the flowers up top, some of them, I'll put a different color in like pink or something in the white and then lighter orange in there and then just go along on that uh, top piece and and then here just filling in and just putting some uh, other colors inside of some of the existing flowers that are there and it's just a little bit lighter and if the color is darker i just put a little bit of lighter in if the color is light like say white then i'll put something a little bit darker in there and you'll see as i as i turn here you'll see the difference of of what i did here and then next up here we have a rabbit 
I got this from Dollar Tree. I was so surprised that this rabbit was in. I've always procrastinated on buying them and then I'll go back and I'll check three stores and they won't have them. And this year I went into my main store that I go into and there were tons of them out on the shelf. So I thought, well, I definitely need to, to grab it this time. And those are carrot picks. I did want orange, but they had these. And I thought, well, if I really wanted to, I could paint them orange. And then as I kept looking at them, I thought they were, they grew on me. I mean, they just became more interesting. So I'm going to, instead of hot gluing the carrot in his arms right away, I'm going to take a look. Cause sometimes what happens with me is I glue the piece in and then I don't like the way it looks. So I'm just positioning here. I really just want the rabbit to hold it across. <laughs> so I have some shipping tape here that I think will help me get that into place. And I'm just cutting small little pieces. And then what we'll do is I fold it over itself so that I can have, you know, double sided. And of course, if you have anything double sided, that will work great. I just didn't have it this time. And then I'm just folding his hand over and then we'll take another one and do the other arm, the other little hand. And then I just fold that right over, making my double sided. And I made it long so that I would, it would stay and I would have a long spot for it to adhere. And I do like the way that that looks. And also what you can do too is put a straight pin in it if you didn't want to hot glue it or you can hot glue it either way. But straight pins, you don't see them as well. So, and you can just, you know, pull them out. And if you wanted to use the carrot for something else, or I'm always reusing things. Sometimes I do just hot glue things in, but I didn't like the way that his hand was unrolling. So I will later put a straight pin in both of those. And I just love the way the carrot looks now. I really do like the colors. And then here I decide that the rabbit needs a little bow, some kind of bow tie. So I have this farmhouse ribbon that I get from Dollar Tree quite a bit. And what I love about this, and it doesn't happen all the time, is that it's double sided. And I sometimes forget that when I'm buying it. And when I tie bows, it just drives me crazy if I have to turn it, reposition it, and glue it and make another one but with this it stays so nice and you don't have to worry about the the other side showing and it makes just just a great bow and it looks it because of the color of the carrot being so <laughs> dynamic i didn't really want to put a busy bow busy color bow on so i thought this farmhouse little tie would be little bow tie would be really cute and what I'm doing there is of course I don't like that it's sticking up and I have to glue it so I'm taking a little bit of hot glue and just gluing that down and resizing it a bit too turning it inside out just to get that shape that I'm looking for and always always love working with that that ribbon and if I see it, I grab it because I, I always use it. It's, it's almost like a staple for me. And, and I work a little bit more and see on that other side, I really didn't like that, the way that was laying down. So I just took my hot glue. I didn't like the way the tail was laying down. So took my hot glue and there we go. Just a cute little bow tie and that's really all you need to do for this bunny. He's just as cute as he could be. And that's how you make fake faux peeps, a hand painted birdhouse and an Easter rabbit. I just love the way that these came out. I had so much fun. That is my mother's tea towel. And I like to put it on my tear tray and it just reminds me of her. We have our peeps here. What I did was I put them in a mason jar with some green, I guess it's torn up paper basically. And then there's 
in the bottom some styrofoam. The measuring spoons are my mom's and I, I sometimes I put them in my tear trays too. And you'll see our birdhouse and our hand-painted birdhouse. Our Easter bunny is just holding his carrot there. And that knitted hat in the back I made for th with a knitting machine. I, that was the first time I ever made one. I've been wanting to make them for my little Ray Dunn cocoa mugs. So that's a first experience with that. But I'm so excited about how everything came out. I hope you are inspired to make one of these or all of them. And if you do, please tag me on Instagram at Tranquil Mentor. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.